This is a video about how to make 9 out of 10 of every lawnmower that's an old Briggs & Stratton start and run even if you know nothing about it. I call it standard procedure. So these are the steps you go through. Right kitty? Anyways, this is for the older style Briggs & Strattons that have the choke engine or choke carburetor. A chokematic carburetor is one that doesn't have a primer bulb, it doesn't have a carb bowl, and it doesn't have a separate fuel tank like one mounted someplace else. Tank is underneath, and when you touch the choke and open it, it closes slowly and automatically. This choke comes on every time you shut the engine off, whether it's hot or cold, whether it needs it or not. So, step one. You know nothing about this lawnmower, you just pull it and feel the compression. On this one the compression felt good. If it, if it has a safety handle, make sure that squeeze when you're pulling this or else the brake will be on and distorting your perception. You're also feeling if the engine feels a little bit seized up or something like that. If the compression feels good, proceed to the next step. Disconnect the spark plug wire and make sure it's away from the spark plug. Then tip your engine over with the exhaust side pointing upwards. Check to see that the blade isn't bent or has big gouges in it like it hits something. Then rotate it and try to watch that bolt and make sure it's not wobbling or that the blade isn't wobbling. No use trying to start a lawnmower with a bent shaft and get it fixed. It's just a waste of time. Sure a bit of gas runs out when you do that but that's okay. If you tip it the other way and gas doesn't run out, well then it runs into the motor and floods it. And then also, oil builds up in the spring cover for the valves, pumps it through the PCV system, fills up your air cleaner, and chokes out your carburetor and spark plug with oil. So that's why you always do it with the valve spring side pointing upwards. Next up on your chokematic carb, always check that the choke is working. So push it all the way to open, see if it closes all the way. If it sort of stops halfway down and sticks or stays open, well it's not likely going to start unless you prime it with a bit of gas in there so you'll likely have to change the diaphragm and clean in there. Never attempt to start a chokematic lawnmower, which means automatic choke, without the screw in part way. The screw goes right into the gas chamber of the tank and if you try to start it, it's too much gas comes out that screw hole and floods your motor out and also it can't get the right amount of choking when that hole is open. Next, check the condition of the gas. Smell it. That smells fresh. If it smells stale, dump it out. Then, find a spot with some good light, wobble the tank back and forth, and look for blobs of water in the bottom. If you see that, pick the whole lawnmower up and dump it out too. And time to check the oil. Well, in this model, the maximum depth is at the top of that dip dipstick when the dipper is screwed in. If you have the other model that has the cap down here, you fill it up to the top line of the opening. Almost any small engine, including this model, uses a half of a liter of oil when it's completely empty if you need to refill it or change your oil. Now check that the throttle is not stuck and that it functions correctly, spring, that the spring is attached. That's the governor spring. If it has a throttle control, check that it's functioning. Now very often when you get a lawnmower, someone's tipped it over and rotated it the wrong way and the air filter has filled up with oil. Well if it has, take it out, wrap it in a rag and squeeze it tight and get most of the excess oil out of there. And if it's really dirty of course, clean, clean or wash it or replace it. Remove the spark plug and check its condition. If it looks like the one I just took out of this mower, don't use it. It's <laughs> probably shorted. It can be really old like this, but still perfectly good. It's not fouled up. Now check for spark. Put the wire on and set the base on something metal and rotate it so that you can see the gap. Make sure the machine's turned on. It's it's on when the metal isn't touching that little tab which is the kill tab that goes to the magneto.
Then give it a fast pull and watch. This one had good spark, but if it had no spark, either you're using a shorted plug like that for testing, or something's touching the kill wire mechanism, or if it has the more modern safety handle that they had after 1986, then your braking system's up here, and there's kills in there, and your lever may not be pulling the cable far enough to disengage the brake all the way and take off the kill that's in here. In very rare circumstances, the magneto may be bad. This is the magneto on Briggs and Stratton's older than 1982. They don't have this extra little button there, this piece of plastic here. That's the kind that uses points and condenser that's under the flywheel. And very often, if they don't have spark, the points need sanded and reset and blown a little bit. To know the year of your Briggs & Stratton engine, there's three sets of numbers, and the last set of numbers, the first two numbers is the year it was made. This is 84. So for sure it has an electronic ignition magneto, or magnetron as they call them. They're very dependable. These electronic ones do go bad, not very often, but a little bit more often than the old-fashioned kind that aren't electronic. If all is okay, reinstall the plug. Not too tight, those are aluminum threads in there. Now if you had no compression, it's probably two reasons. A stuck exhaust valve, which means the exhaust valve is stuck open, well then you have to take the head off, put some oil on it, and knock it back and forth. Like tap it closed, rotate the engine, open it, tap it closed, more oil, and keep doing that till it's freed. The other reason it could be freewheeling with no compression is that the cylinder is very scored from overheating which is caused by too much grass in there or a mouse nest or it was run without oil and the cylinder is scored or it was run without oil or over revved and the connecting rod has let go of the crankshaft often breaking a hole in the side of the block so now when you pull it and the crankshaft rotates it's not moving the piston. Now while it's in this sort of disassembled state Check to see how much grass or whatever is coming out the cooling fins or may, may be jammed in there. You may have to remove the cover to blow everything out. Mouse nests are deadly for engines and so is a lot of grass. Check to see that the recoil recoils smoothly. Well, this one has a broken spring, but that's another video. If it doesn't, well, take it apart and oil the spring mechanism or the shaft on the top pole braking stratons, the shaft underneath the ratchet. Don't use motor oil, use automatic transmission oil, 3-in-1 oil, or electric motor oil. Now that you're sure the shaft's not bent, compression seems okay, choke is closing, screw is in, you've got spark, decent spark plug, enough oil, you've got fresh gas in it. Make sure you have more than half a tank of gas. These kind of Briggs engines like to start a lot better with more than half a tank of gas. Well, your next step is the trick to make them start easy. Give it a tip up like that. Spark plug always pointing towards the ground. For about two or three seconds, that primes the little sub-chamber in here with extra gas under the carburetor. Do that every time you cold start a Chocomatic Briggs and Stratton. Now it's time to start it. Always do it the very first time when it's an unknown engine with the air cleaner cover off so you can see how well the choke's working. If you start it and the choke doesn't open up, it just keeps chugging and making black smoke, well then you need to change your diaphragm in here and make sure that it was assembled properly. Some people have the little spring in there on the wrong spot. Also make sure that when you shut the engine off, the choke recloses again. So let's go for it. Sounds like it's running a bit rich. So we have a mixture adjustment screw here. Well, if your lawnmower started and ran for a couple seconds and died and does it every time you start it, stick your flat screwdriver in here and turn the screw back a half a turn and try it again. It still does the same thing, turn it back a bit more. When you do get it running, set it to full speed and rotate this till it starts to chug and puff black smoke. Slowly rotate it clockwise again till the engine smooths out and runs perfectly. If you keep turning it, it will still run perfectly, but it will stall when you hit the grass as it's running too lean. So rotate it back till just the point where 
starts to chug and make black smoke and then rotate it between a quarter and an eighth of a turn in the run perfect range and stop there. If you go to start it next time and it starts and stalls, well, turn it back one eighth of a turn counterclockwise. It may fix it just right. While it's running, look for oil burning smoke that does not clear up after a little bit. And listen for crank knock noises. So you can so decide whether you want to keep this engine or scrap it. If you want to increase the speed that your llama runs at for more power, just cut off a couple little winds on this governor spring, bend a new hook on it, and the shorter that spring is, the faster your motor will go. Please don't make it too short, you could blow up your engine. Well that's all your basic tricks you need to know to get a lawnmower running, at least this kind of engine. My next set of videos is going to, how to be how to fix all the individual problems that you'll run into with engines that didn't start with going through this procedure.